Hi, this is Ambie from Board Game Blitz, and today I'm going to talk about all the games I played in September. So I logged my plays using Board Game Geek and BG Stats, which is an app on my phone that links to Board Game Geek. Uh, but I had 29 plays in September of 17 different games, six of which were new to me, but most of those were children's games. So this is probably going to be a shorter recap this month. But I had five plays of Phantom Inc., which I've mentioned a lot before. It's a team word guessing game where you're asking questions to your team member who knows the word and then they're giving clues one letter at a time and then the other people see those clues <laughs> so they're kind of like trying to figure out what the words mean because you, you cut them off before they finish the word. I had four plays of Micro Macro Crime City All In which is technically new to me because it's the, the third in the set but I've played the first two in the set and they're basically the same thing. It's all like mysteries that you're solving but it's like a big Where's Waldo picture that's in black and white and you're finding these people throughout the picture. It's like multiple snapshots in time all in one picture. Four plays of My First Adventure Finding the Dragon. It's a choose your own adventure RPG for kids. And I also had two plays of My First Adventure Journey to Ogreland and one play of My First Adventure Discovering Atlantis. Those are all in the same series of books. I have two plays logged of Cantaloupe Book 2 but it's really just like one whole game. Um, I had started a couple months ago and then finished this month. It's a point and click adventure in a book but like there's Cantaloupe Book 1 and then this continues the story. There's like this mini game that it adds that I liked at first, it was a little puzzly and stuff, but like by the end I did not like it anymore because like remembering all the rules was annoying and then also I think some of the solutions they have were not right, so that was kind of weird. There's also a big typo that like made it so that I couldn't actually continue without reading a hint because like the place that you were supposed to be allowed to go, there was a typo that didn't let you unlock that place yet. So um, if you, if you want to play Cantaloupe Book 2, make sure you check the errata. I had one play of Locomotive Works, which is not new to me, but it's been a while since I played it. Locomotive Works is an economic game. You're like building trains. Um, it's a train game, but there's like a lot of different levels of these trains in different colors. And so as the game goes on, they increase in levels. And then you're like buying the trains, the new trains, and then like leveling up your trains so that they can hold more production. In each round, there's dice that are rolled for each type of train. And then that's like the available production that you're selling. Everyone combined gets to use those so like each round those dice are re-rolled and you see like how much is available of the trains that you have. Player order is super important and it's determined by how much money you have at the end of the round and then later trains end up rusting or making the old trains obsolete so like you have to keep buying the new and new trains and then the money keeps compounding too like the new trains are worth a lot more than the old trains and they give you a lot more money too. So it's a fun economic game that's kind of like train rusting the game, like train rusting from 18xx, but like just just that part kind of in a game. <laughs> I played one play of Bat Flip, which was a new to me game. That was a review copy. I talked about it on the podcast, but it's a two player card game that's themed around baseball. I played one play of Kazuko, which I mentioned the last couple times. It's a cooperative liar's dice type game. And one play of Glitch Squad, which I played at four players instead of the higher player count that I played last time. I liked it more at four players than I did at the higher player count. And I'm going to talk about it on the podcast this week. I'm not sure when this video is coming out, but it'll be on the podcast. Okay, and then I played a lot of children's games. So <laughs> one new to me children's game is Candyland. Uh, this was a hand-me-down and I gave it to my kids for their birthday. Uh, I get. I don't think I played Candyland when I was a kid and I haven't played a log play of it before, but it's a children's game where you're going across a board and you're drawing cards that have a color on it and that's how much you move. There's an advanced version where you draw two cards on your turn and you get to pick one, which I think is what we're gonna play because like my kids did really well with the rules on this one. They liked the theme too and I think they wanna play more of it. So we'll probably play the advanced rules later. I had one play of the color monster, which I had talked about before. It's a game where you talk about your emotions. And then another new to us play is Exit the Game Kids uh, Jungle of Riddles. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> so Exit the Game is a series of escape room type games that I really like, um, but this is a kids version. I didn't like this as much as some other kids escape room games that I played because it didn't have any story. And the puzzles were all like similar, kind of like finding the images of animals or like the odd animal out or something. You have a little decoder ring of three different animals that you're trying to get the key for. But my kids liked looking at the animal images and trying to find it and with some help they were able to play. Another new game that we tried was Space Planet, which I think is for when they're a little older. But it's a game where you're rolling dice onto the this grid of cards that have like planets on them. And you're like actually rolling, it's kind of dexterity, you're rolling onto the grid. And then when you get the die on the grid, like that's the planet that you can buy. 
And so you spend gems and try to get that planet. And you're, each planet is worth a different amount of points and some have special powers. And so you're trying to like get the most points. They, they were kind of understanding how to count the points and stuff and like spend the points. But then the special powers and stuff, that's just too complicated for my kids right now. <laughs> I had one play of First Order, which I mentioned before. It's a cooperative game where you're rolling a die and trying to get the colored fruit into the basket before the raven gets to the end. Uh, one play of Storytime Chess, we got to the bishops this time. So we've done kings and pawns and then bishops I think was next. So one of my kids played with me and he was learning that bishops move diagonally and I had to keep reminding him that it only moves diagonally because he, he was getting that they have to stay on the one color but then he was trying to like jump over <laughs> the other color. And then another new game, children's game that I played is Friends and Neighbors the Helping Game which we actually played at preschool. This game is a cooperative game for kids. It's best with one kid. So it didn't work very well at preschool because like everyone wanted their own board, but it's a cooperative game where you share a board and you're drawing tiles out of a bag to try to match. It's like a matching game. And then you're talking about um, how you helped that person. Cause like there's a picture of a person with like a scraped knee or something and then you draw a bandaid out of the bag and help that person. So it's best with one child and not a bunch of people trying to use their own boards because there's only enough tokens for one board. So yeah, that was all the games I played in September. Lots of children's games. I missed one of our game nights because I was busy. So. That's why it's fewer adult games, I guess. But it was still a good month. Let me know in the comments what games you played in September and if you have any suggestions for games that I should play or that I might like that I haven't talked about yet. Thanks for watching Board Game Plots. Bye.